There was once a fellow who came to Maran Reb Gershon Edelstein Zatzal. Guy was broken. And he told Reb Gershon, I didn't even have one good day in my life. Only bad things. My parents used to fight all day long. Used to live in fear. And then they got divorced. And as a kid, I always promised myself, my kids are not going to go through the same thing. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave me a Eshe wonderful wife. Not Pashut at all. And my kids are actually experiencing greater challenges and difficulties than I did. I don't even have one good day in my life. What am I supposed to do? And he started crying. And Rabbi Gershon told him, I want to tell you two things. First of all, you should stop benching. After you eat bread, stop benching. This fellow looks at Rabbi Gershon and says, what's the connection? Why shouldn't I say benching? And Rabbi Gershon answered, don't you say in benching, he did such great things for us. He does now, and he will in the future. And you're telling me that you never had anything good in your life. So don't lie to Rebbein Shiloh. And second of all, I want to show you something. And he pulls out Rabbeinu Bechaye and Parshas Kiseise. The Torah commands, Vashita Ma'akele Gagecha. Make a guardrail. Make sure you put a fence on the roof. Why? Ki yipol hanoifel mimeno. Because, Khalila, we don't want anyone to fall. Says Rabbeinu Bechaye. He brings the Medish. Really, this guy who's going to be on your roof is going to fall. Was supposed to fall from the six days of creation. That's when it was decreed. In other words, it's not because you didn't have a guardrail. This guy fell. It's because there was a decree against him that he's going to fall. But you have to make sure not to be the one causing his death. In other words, if there was not a decree that a person will die... He's not going to fall, even if there is no guardrail. And if there is a decree that someone will fall, he will. But you have to make sure that you're not going to be the one. That because of you, the guy fell. Continues Rabbeinu Bechayi and says, The Inyan HaMiddash Hazeh. What is this Medish talking about? All the people in this world were created according to their will. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu told them ahead of time, Everything that's going to happen, transpire throughout their life everything before a person comes into this world they show him exactly what parnasa he will have or won't have what sorrows what good things everything shows a person exactly how he will live and how he will die what type of parnasa will he have a lot easy smooth sailing or will be difficult Will he be sustained by others or he will provide for himself? And that is what Chazal said. Every person selected this. And everyone wanted, agreed, and accepted. So Gershon says to him, if you wanted, you could have stayed up there. But here it says, everyone, including everyone, wanted and accepted. So why did you come? Continues the Benu B'chayi and says, and because of that it says, that this guy was supposed to fall from the six days of creation, and yet there is punishment, a great one, for the one who's going to cause it. And that's why, make sure you put a guardrail. So Gershon looks at this guy and says to him, what do you want? You agreed to come here. You could have stayed up there. They told you ahead of time exactly what's going to happen. This will be your wife. These will be your kids. And you said, I'm really ready, willing, and able. So why do you have any claims now? When you were up there, you understood that everything, everything, everything is good. And everything is for your benefit. And after 120, you will again understand it. And in the meantime, just rely on this medish. Rely on Rabbeinu Bechayet. Because kol man de'avid rachmana. Letav Avid, everything. HaKadosh Baruch Hu does. It's for good. As the Baalei Musa say, don't ask too many questions on HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Don't give him a reason to call him, to call you, to go upstairs, so he'll be able to answer you. But we have to look into this. Why did he really agree? Is he a fool? To come down here to a life full of difficulties and challenges. Who needs it? Chofetz Chaim explained. The neshama really doesn't want to come down. Even if a life full of pleasures, a ton of money, 
will be decreed for it because the neshama is from the ilyonim wants to stay up there but then they tell the neshama dear neshama you should know the title eved hashem you can't achieve it up there only if you go down there oila mazeh and you will withstand the tests then you can merit that title up there can advance and become an Eved Hashem. And then the Neshama asks, yes, please, I want to go down there. In order to be able to acquire this lofty title, Eved Hashem. Let's translate this to us, to our lives. We live here in this generation with all that sorrows that we have today. And we already agreed to them when we were up there. But why do we agree to them? To lose the unbelievable experience, to stay up there? By Elyonim with all the Malachim. All the tzaddikim, and instead have all these sorrows, all these tests, and these yoinis, because we want to be able to achieve, to acquire this title. He was an Eved Hashem. In this world, it's maybe not the greatest honor to be called Eved Hashem, but above. That's what everybody aspires to. They all look up to a person who is called Eved Hashem. In Davening we say, Yismach Moshe bematnas chelkoi. Moshe should be happy. Moshe is the master of Nevi. What is his title? Ki Eved Neeman Karasalo. Because you called him a Kodesh Baruch a loyal servant. That's what the Pasuk says in Baal Oisra. Perek Yud Beis Pasuk Zayin. Lochen Avdi Moshe. Bechol Beisi Neeman Hu. My servant Moshe is loyal. That's his greatest claim to fame. That's his greatest title. Eved Neeman. True. A loyal servant. For this title, the greater the Nisayon, the greater the reward. More a person shows love to Kodesh Baruch when he stands, is able to conquer his Yetzer, to withstand the test, he grows. And Chazal tells in Sukkot and Beis, Kol HaGodol Mechavei Yitzor Gadol Himeno. The greater the person, the greater his Yetzer. And the one who has a greater yetzer from his friend, and he is able to stand, and his yoinis, he is greater than his friend. And we all know it's all chesed. Oilam chesed yibone. That is what the pasuk in Tehillim say. Oilam chesed yibone. And cheshbonis shemaim now are hidden from our eyes, but when we get up there, the end, the end of the journey, we will understand it all. Why does this guy have this, and this guy got this? Why is it tzaddik veralo and the wicked flourish? How does it work? But we know it's all a life of chesed. And one of the greatest gifts in this world of chesed is Elul. The month of Elul because even a person who did everything wrong gets another chance to repent, to come back. Elul is days of ratzon, days of rachamim. As the tool writes in the beginning of Hilchos Rosh Hashanah and Simen Tafkuf Pei Aleph. That these are the 40 days from the beginning of Elul that Moshe went upstairs to receive the second set of tablets in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Was Moichel the sin of the golden calf and he got the second set of tablets. In Elul it's easier to do tshuva and in Elul they receive and accept our tshuva faster. We have to make sure to take advantage of these special, special days and to always continue to aspire to get that title, the end of the journey, they should be calling us an Eved Hashem.